Well, hi there. Good afternoon. Uh, it is Sunday, the 29th of September, journal number 182. Um, T plus 180, uh, six months post-transplant, a significant milestone, um, certainly. And what made me think about that and, and the topic of today's conversation is is really the, the uh, my acceptance as a member of the Patient Family Advisory Council at City of Hope. And the fact that I couldn't do that without my doctor's permission. In other words, the council had to go to my doctor and ask him if I was physically capable, physically able, um, participating and and for a number of reasons not not just you know the fact that uh, you know physically it would take a toll on me but also being in a room with 20 plus other people you know, depending upon what you know who's carrying what at any given moment now, I have to admit there's probably no more cautious group of people on the planet than the people on the PFAC, on the, on the Patient Family Advisory Council, because all of them are either survivors of various different types of cancer, having been treated at the City of Hope, or their family members and caregivers of people that have been treated at the City of Hope and have survived. So, um, perhaps better than anyone else, they understand the need to be safe, hygienically safe, physically safe. But without my doctor's permission, I wouldn't be allowed to do that. They would not have uh, even entertained the idea of having me on the council. And you, you don't think of that as being anything of consequence at first, but then you realize that, you know, that the doctor is being uh, optimistic and uh, by saying that I, that I would be able to participate, he's saying, I think he's going to be well enough for long enough to make a contribution. And uh, which is a reason for, for me to be cautiously optimistic. And by the way, I don't, I'm not sure that there is any other kind of optimism that makes sense other than cautious optimism. When people around my dad, may rest in peace, used to uh, exhibit signs of, of uh, acute optimism, he, he, he tended to refer to them as being cockeyed optimists. I never was really 100% sure what that meant. But from the context, I always assumed that it meant somebody who was optimistic um, to the point of ignoring things that really shouldn't have been ignored. Um, I tend not to do that. I tend to be optimistic, but cautiously optimistic. You know, they joke around and they say that a, that a pessimist sees the glass half empty and an optimist sees the glass half full and an engineer sees the glass as being underutilized. So I don't, I don't know what all of that means, but um, I think I'm a cautious optimist. I'd like to think that. Um, and I'd like to think that Dr. Snyder's um, permission to participate is a sign of that optimism that I'm well on my way towards uh, recovery. But it's interesting because, um, and I'll give you an example of that. I was asked to participate in uh, the magazine that I write for in their management conference. And they do a management conference every year. I've participated in many of them. Um, I don't remember missing one. I'm sure I did, but I'm, I don't remember which one it was. Um, let me tell you how this cautious optimism works. 
I'm still 100% immunocompromised. I won't be anything other than immunocompromised until I start getting my shots, actually starting next week, I think. Um, and that schedule runs for the balance of the year until my birthday, six months from now. So basically what that means is I'll be getting a whole series of immunizations over a six month period. And the reason it takes so long is because the, the immunizations are broken down into thirds of what a normal dose might be because I have no immune system. And uh, my guess is that a full dose would be, would have an interesting outcome uh, in all kinds of uh, dangers that would accompany it. So I'm not gonna be attending that conference this year because I'm immunocompromised. I'm not gonna get on an airplane to get to Chicago to do that or to get to Minnesota rather to do it this year. Um, because as my wife would so aptly put it, airplanes are cootie farms and uh, dangerous places to be as, for anybody, let alone somebody who's got a compromised immune system. So that's the cautious part of the, the cautious optimism. The, the optimistic part of the cautious op optimism is that I fully intend to participate next year. You know, assuming that, that all things are taken into consideration. I, I should be um, probably a year and a half into my recovery at that point. Uh, so that's the optimistic part of the cautious optimism. But I, I, I'll give you I'll give you a really interesting example of how this all plays out in the real world. I was never. I never really contemplated any of the elements involved in publishing, in the notion of publishing a book other than getting it finished. And there were probably a lot of reasons for that. One was probably naivete, but certainly one of the major reasons that I never gave it much thought was because I wasn't 100% sure that I was going to be here to finish it. And, you know, as many of you know from previous blog posts, I, uh, I, I went to Ryan, I went to our son and, and you know, beseeched him um, to finish the project, to get the book finished. Um, if anything would happen to me, uh, you know, I was cautiously optimistic then too. I thought everything would be okay. I had the odds in my favor at 65, 35. Um, if 65% of the people survived this process, then I didn't see any reason why I couldn't be part of that 65%. Um, fully realizing that 35% of the people involved in a transplant you know, are not successful to one degree or another. And one of those degrees being, being um, survival and not surviving. And we have, you know, I had, I certainly had my experience with that. And, um, and someone that I knew who didn't make it. As a result of that, now that I'm, feeling better. I'm six months into recovery. Uh, I did survive the transplant. Looks like I'm going to continue to recover. I have to turn my attention to um, all of the elements of publishing, publicizing, and promoting the book that I ignored before. Because while I was optimistic about surviving the transplant, uh, I was cautiously optimistic about surviving the transplant. I didn't want to get ahead of myself. Um, so now I have to go ahead and think about what comes next. And that's where the optimistic part of all of this comes in, because um, I'm assuming dangerously assuming you know what that's all about make an ass of you and me but i'm assuming that things will flow out of the publishing of this book 
I, I'll need to go and talk to people about it. I'll need to be in front of groups talking about it, what it means, how to use it, how to take the information, how to enjoy the story, and, and things like that. And um, while I fully intend to remain cautious about the opportunity and the ability to do that, um, I also, you know, want to be certain that I don't miss those opportunities and I take advantage of all those opportunities to get the message of the book out there because I think it's an important message. I think it's a message of, of hope and I think it's a, uh, a message of success and it's a message of accomplishment and achievement and uh, triumph in many ways. So um, when you're looking at that class, maybe you think about it as being underutilized because that gets rid of all of the pessimism and that gets rid of some of the uh, cockeyed optimism and becomes more realistic. Um, just remember one thing. If someone else has done anything or is about to do something, um, it's not impossible. And that should make you even more optimistic about all the things that you have to do. So in the meantime, stay well and take care. I will not be here tomorrow. I will not publish a blog tomorrow. May not publish one um, on Tuesday, but I'll be back on Wednesday for sure. So you might want to look for one on Tuesday. Can't say that I'll, I'll do it one way or the other right now, but I can promise you that I will be back on Wednesday. So until then, stay well, um, take care. For all our uh, Jewish friends out there, uh, happy, healthy, sweet New Year. Bye-bye.